Is anybody else already starting to feel a little exhausted by all the product embargoes? That's why we're doing a tutorial today because I'm still constantly trying to learn new things and one of the best ways to learn is to make mistakes. But there's some really simple, easy mistakes to avoid that people just kind of keep making over and over. And these are some of the biggest beginner filmmaker mistakes that I see all of the time. First off, your camera, it's just not good enough. JK, all cameras are good these days, but you're probably not getting the full potential out of it because your camera settings suck. Get your freaking settings right, 24 frames per second, the correct frame rate to edit in, to film in, unless you're doing slow motion or you're a tech YouTuber and you wanna do 30 frames per second, I guess that's fine. <clears throat> Highly recommend shooting in log. I don't think there's any reason to not shoot in log these days. It's just giving you way more data, way more information to work with, and there's so many really easy LUTs to get your log footage to look normal without destroying you know, the highlights or the shadows. You have all of that room to color grade later. And please don't shoot in auto. If you're still shooting in auto, man, you're not getting all that you could from your camera. Um, just really basic. Your ISO is gonna stay at the base ISO of your camera. That is the most optimal for dynamic range and colors. Your shutter speed will stay at double whatever your frame rate's in. So most of the time you're gonna be in 24 frames per second. So your shutter is at 48 or 50 because a lot of cameras don't do 48. And then the aperture, that is your creative choice but I think the right choice for most situations is to just go as wide open as possible so the smallest number f-stop that you can just to get you know some of that nice shallow depth of field that blur it just it just looks way better which leads us to number two getting the wrong lens you put all of your hard-earned money into the camera body and then you just put on just not a very good lens and that just kills it. You want a nice shallow depth of field lens and that doesn't mean it's gonna cost you a ton. Actually, a lot of the zoom lenses cost more than a really nice prime lens. You can get a really nice 50 mil f1.8. That's very affordable. If you have a little bit more money, I really like the 35 mil and 24 mil f1.4s. Those are just like, so nice, especially the 24 for me. I just really like that. Not only does shallow depth of field just look really cool, but it draws a lot of attention and focus on your subject, which is such a good signal for the audience as to where they should be looking. Like, should you be looking over here or here or over here? Shallow depth of field, if I'm the only thing in focus, it's obvious. And the best part is you can buy these used. A lot of lenses that I've bought in the past, I've just bought them used because they're just as good. And also lenses don't really depreciate in value very much, whereas camera bodies go way down real fast. So uh, you can put a lot more money into glass and feel good about it too. Hey, what are you doing? You're a great model, buddy. Thanks for coming to the office today. <laughs> Wait, did you fall? What happened? No. You... <laughs> Number three. Your audio sucks. And, and not because you're not using one of these fancy micro, I'm not even actually using this microphone. I'm just, just using this little tiny one on top here. Your audio most likely sucks because you're just too far away from the microphone. Let me illustrate. This is me right now talking to you about, I don't know, maybe 10 feet away or something like that. We're gonna keep the audio levels the same and just notice how it all of a sudden doesn't sound all that good. Now, we're about five feet away. So now it's probably sounding a little bit better, but still not that good. Now this is where I am normally when I'm talking to the camera. I'm about, I don't know, a foot and a half away from my little shotgun mic. And I kind of just go with a little shotgun mic on top of the camera nowadays a lot of times. I don't rig up one of these or anything like this. This is for like podcasts and stuff where it really, really matters. But if you want to do a voiceover and you don't have 
a really fancy microphone. All you need to do is get even closer. That's gonna get a little awkward. Okay, this is me doing a voiceover for one of my videos. Notice how it's even better now, especially if we go back to the wide. And compared to this, this sounds like absolute trash right now. Whereas the closer I get, the better the audio sounds. There's your mistake. Oh, and make sure it's not coming in too hot. Have the audio levels be bouncing around, you know, minus 12 dB. That's kind of the safe zone. You don't want it to be peaking and blowing out and just sounding nasty. Number four, using a Canon. Okay, just kidding again. Uh, thank you, Canon, for uh, letting me test out the R5C. Uh, it has been a long time since I've used some Canon gear. And I don't know about you, I just get bored. I get bored of using the same camera over and over again, so it's kind of just fun to try new stuff. Okay, number four is not using motion graphics, which at first might sound weird, but filmmaking is basically just problem solving. You're trying to tell a story and you're using different tools to tell that story. And if you don't have all the tools in your tool bag, you're very limited. And motion graphics is one of the easiest ways to tell story or to add a little bit of context or a little bit of, you know, detail or information here. A lot of times, so often, I'm like, ah, oh, this scene is so good, but there's zero context. Like people don't understand what is happening because I didn't talk about it, I didn't say this, or I didn't film that thing. And I'm like, oh, Motion graphics, I can easily say whatever I want in post through motion graphics. And then of course you're like, well, I'm a beginner. I don't know how to animate <laughs> and you don't need to. All of the graphics that I've been using in this episode, for example, I didn't animate any of those. I literally just downloaded put them into my timeline, change the text, boom, done. You do not need to become an animator. In most cases, I would say don't even try. You are wasting your time. With sites like Motion Array, there's a link down below, $50 off, less than 20 bucks a month. You can use all of their assets, all of the motion graphics, the plugins, the stock footage, the music, the sound effects, all of that. It's really hard to quantify how much time and money something like Motion Array will save save you because it really depends on how bad you are at motion graphics and how slow you are because it's really time consuming especially if you want to do it well. Motion Array gives you access to this massive library that makes using motion graphics this fast. Thank you so much Motion Array for sponsoring this video. There really isn't any reason, no excuse for you to not use motion graphics. Again, to tell story but then also to add a little bit of production value, spice it up a little bit, just make it feel like you put real effort into that video. And you can thank me later for saving you a whole ton of time and money. And number five, your lighting sucks. Yeah, that that still looks pretty bad, eh? You see, with the advent of what's called the ring light, I think most people are actually using lights these days. They're just not using them right. And there's three big mistakes that people make. That is making them too bright, too harsh, or just crazy colors. Have you ever seen this where like the person is really bright but the background is super dark? And that's just because the light here is way too strong and in comparison then that background is really dark. So just dial it down, hold on a second. Now we can see the person and the background still. There's some detail back there. Make sure that the light isn't too strong. I see this all the time. And then secondly, um, I mean this is pretty soft but Let's make it even softer. <laughs> the softer the source, the more flattering, the more nice it will be. So you can just make your source bigger like this, or you can just get closer, and the closer you get, the softer it is. And lastly, people just mess around with crazy colors. Uh, yeah, it's cool to have some magenta in the background, but look at my face, it's not looking good. Also, I just, I hate magenta. Who likes magenta? Terrible color. Mostly I just like to stick with natural colors. It's just a lot easier, a lot simpler. If you're gonna mix colors, you gotta really know what you're doing. Number six, color grading mistakes. And there's really three common ones within color grading that I see a lot. And that is your footage looked terrible from the beginning, you're going too far with it, or you just 
didn't color grade at all. No matter how good you are at color grading, if you terribly underexpose or overexpose your footage or the colors are just nuts, it's not gonna look that good. It always looks better if your starting point is already pretty decent. And then, don't go too far with it. A lot of people just buy a lot, slap it on 100%, and they, they don't <laughs> finesse it at all. I wanna see finesse. Most of the time, even my own LUTs, I'm using like 50 to 75% at most, and sometimes even less. Very, very subtle color grades are usually much nicer than like very harsh, crazy ones. And my colors go through the gamut. I've made some big mistakes, you get new cameras, new programs, and you have to kind of relearn everything. Um, I feel like now I'm in like a happy place again, but for a while there, I was just, uh, in the middle of the exodus in the desert, trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life in terms of color. But in the end, all of this stuff that I've just been saying doesn't really matter if there's no point to your video. And number seven, I think that's the biggest mistake. The biggest mistake that people make is there's just no point to the video. You've learned some really cool new filmmaking skills and then you just make this thing, but like, what is it? And, and just it being a vlog or it being a short film or whatever isn't a thing. There's, that's not a point. There's got to be some sort of story to it, some reason for people to want to watch that video. Hook them in from the beginning with a compelling problem or question or observation or relatable character or situation and then take them through that journey and keep them watching till the end by answering some of those questions, digging deeper into those problems and just overall giving a reason for people to stick around. How do you do this? You sit down, you plan it, you come up with an idea. If you are not planning your videos, if you don't have any sort of script, even a rough version of it, I guarantee you that the story will be weak at best. Story is one of the most vague words in filmmaking and I kind of hate using it, but you need to give the audience a reason. Give them a point, a point to watch your videos. There has to be some point to it. And if you can't give it to me in five seconds, there's no point to the video. There's no like reason for people to watch that video. And that's what fixing all of these other mistakes is all about, to give you an even more clear, more concise, more just focused storyline. So there isn't all these distractions, these things that you're doing a little bit wrong and they just distract the audience like bad audio or just a messed up color grade. Fixing these mistakes will make your story much more clear and obvious and easier to pay attention to. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I've observed lately. I hope these little like just these little tidbits help you out a lot because I am constantly learning and it's actually very very um in what's the word it's making me feel very grateful being at f1 and hearing so many people come up to us and say we changed their careers changed their lives and that they were actually at f1 because of videos like these sometimes i feel like i'm just like spitballing things and then yeah you never know where that information can go so uh yeah take these learn Get all these beginner mistakes out of your system. And uh, yeah, I, I hope to see some of your great storytelling videos in the future. Okay, that's it for me. I will see you guys later. Bye. More surf time. Is that Pierre? The guy next to you? Sure is. Yes. Guess that's the end of the video.